So these are the agendas that I will go through the sessions. Uh, first, I will, we will look at uh, what actually disaster in cloud. Then we will just uh, take a look at how disaster can affect DNS. And then we will uh, just go through what are the disaster recovery, how it comes to rescue. Then we will look at what are the crucial uh, disaster recovery plan that we should make. Then uh, we will go through a brief overview of designate. Then we will see how we can uh, deploy uh, multi-region designate and how we can use it for disaster recovery. Then we will have a small demo and uh, then we will discuss the challenges. So let's start. So what is disaster? Anything uh, uh, that has a negative impact on the company's business continuity or finances could be termed as disaster. You know, disaster, when we talk about disaster, we talk about anything. Uh, it's uh, uh, any event that can bring down your data centers, like tornadoes, earthquakes, fires, sometimes hardware failures, and there are human-induced errors also. So they, uh, in, when disaster strikes your data center, sometimes what happens, the data, go, data just, you lost data. And data is the lifeline of an enterprise. So you don't want to lose your data because it impacts on your business continuity and also on the revenue of the company. And if we talk uh, this, in terms of DNS, how disaster can affect DNS, we see that when, uh, because uh, our application, most of the application, they, uh, they are being uh, resolved uh, through the DNS. So when uh, just DNS goes down, your site will be inaccessible because uh, the there'll be, uh, DNS server will not be present to resolve the domain names and the failed component, sometimes failed component of some uh, DNS servers may cause the mail delivery to be delayed anywhere from a few hours to a few days. And it literally cripples a global IT operations. And you may lo uh, lose your customer goodwill as well as your reputation will be lost. And nobody will be able to reach your website when your DNS server will be down, whether, it is, whether uh, your application is up or running. So uh, I would like to tell you a, a real incident uh, of a, a disaster uh, affecting DNS. Back in 2001, uh, Microsoft uh, websites and its uh, other associated uh, companies' websites like Amazon.com, uh, Expedia.com, and Hotmail.com, they had their DNS servers, their four DNS servers, on uh, on the same network segment. So what happened uh, at that point of time, some technician changed the routing table in a way that the outside traffic, uh, uh, no message was able to reach those DNS servers of uh, Microsoft. So the, uh, the, so the site was, the Microsoft family of websites uh, were down for 22 hours. And uh, Later, it was blamed to be the poor network design that all the four DNS servers were on the same network. Uh, so uh, later, it was fixed. And what happened? Just because those uh, 22 hours of down, because all the sites were down, uh, Microsoft families of websites were down, so they lost, uh, they incurred a heavy loss. And also, they're in advertisement, and uh, also their other websites their retail websites also lost a huge amount of revenue. So how uh, we can uh, just uh, uh, prepare ourselves to recover this type of disaster? So we are really crisis ahead if we have a, our DNS goes down. So disaster recovery comes to rescue. So what disaster recovery is? Disaster recovery is the process, policy, and procedure for recover of technologies and infrastructure after a natural or human-induced disaster. It's a process of ensuring continuity of a set of workloads 
following or in advance a large scale disaster that disrupt, uh, disrupts the current environment or infrastructure. So actually disaster, uh, disaster recovery is basically what makes your IT environment run again following a disaster that really brings down your uh, data centers. So by large scale disaster, as we already talked, uh, uh, which can lead to a complete loss of data centers, like, uh, such as floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, hurricanes, fires. And when we talk about uh, the disaster recovery, what we actually mean is that our, the, the recovery site should be at a geographically distinct location so that we will be able to just, at the time of disaster, we will be able to quickly recover uh, by switching to our disaster recovery site. So uh, this is a pie chart that uh, just depicts uh, the different types of failures due to uh, uh, just uh, the cause of disasters. So when we think about disaster recovery, first thing that everybody uh, things is uh, uh, data backup. So is that the data backup is the only solution? It's, uh, no, that is not the only solution. Because data backup is empty. If uh, you have no recovery solution, you can back, uh, you can back up the data and, uh, and metadata to a recovery site. But if you don't have any recovery plan, then uh, the disaster recovery of no use. So disaster recovery is more than simply backing up the data. So uh, let's. These are uh, when we uh, plan our disaster recovery. The first thing uh, that uh, the plan begins with is the business impact analysis, and we at that point of time we think of two key matrices. One is uh, recovery time objective, and recovery. Another is recovery point objective. So uh, what is recovery time objective? It's a maximum acceptable amount of time that your uh, data center will be offline. OK, uh, so uh, say uh, if uh, uh, you have your uh, recovery time objective is uh, uh, four hours, and uh, some uh, disaster strikes at uh, uh, 7 AM in the morning, then uh, by uh, by uh, 11 a.m., your, 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 the workloads that is running should be recovered. And second one is recovery point objective. Uh, recovery point objective is a maximum acceptable uh, amount of time uh, in which your data will be lost. Because uh, uh, maybe uh, some, uh, uh, it may, uh, your data may be impacted just because of some disaster. So uh, it's, it's, uh, the recovery point objective is measured in terms of quantity. Note, it doesn't mention the quality of data that will be lost. So you can see through the, uh, this graph that if you want to have your recovery time objective and recovery point objective to be very low, then uh, definitely you will have to incur cost. Like uh, in, uh, in banking application, uh, in banking application, this is uh, really required because you have uh, thousands of transactions going in seconds. So you won't really want your uh, uh, disaster recovery plan to have uh, RTO and RPO to be very less. Uh, physically, if, uh, for all the applications, if you want your RTO, uh, RTO or RPO to be in milliseconds, uh, that is uh, normally not feasible. So uh, these are all defined in SLAs. So uh, another thing that is very crucial uh, while we plan our disaster recovery is uh, uh, ensure that uh, the replicated data and metadata consistency. So uh, what is uh, data? One is data consistency. Uh, it's point in time consistency. Means uh, the data should be constant in time. Means uh, if we, we are backing up the data from uh, our uh, primary site to recovery site, okay, then uh, th that data sh should be consistent as well as the, the changes that are being uh, made 
after uh, uh, the backup should also be reflected uh, at the disaster recovery site. So uh, next is metadata consistency. Metadata, there's all the configurations uh, that we do in uh, all the configurations that are in uh, different components. So uh, metadata consistency that the configuration updates that will be shown in the same order related to one another in the data updates, uh, into data updates. Excuse me. Okay, next, uh, let's, uh, because uh, we are going to just plan a disaster recovery in designates, so let's go through the designate overview. So uh, designate is a multi in DNS as a service for OpenStack. It provides DNS service in your OpenStack cloud. It's provided in uh, a REST API through, uh, by which you can easily manage your uh, join and record chat in OpenStack Cloud, it's, uh, uh, it's integrated, it's REST API integrated with Keystone that provides authentication and it is, if we uh, integrate, it can be integrated with NOAA and Neutron for auto generation of records. So let's have a uh, uh, brief overview of uh, designate architecture. It has a uh, API just like another OpenStack uh, uh, component APIs, uh, like NOAA and Neutron, uh, which uh, accepts the HTTP request, validates authentication tokens, and then pass, it, uh, pass uh, the request to designate central for further processing. So central, uh, is, that is the component where all the business logic resides. So it uh, talks to database, and also uh, uh, it's, uh, it's also talk to workers, producers. So, uh, here, the, what the producer does, it actually generates periodical tasks and send to worker for do the further task. Worker uh, is the component that uh, actually uh, performs uh, most of the work. It uh, performs the creation of zones, uh, creation, deletion, updation of zones by uh, by performing. Uh, by creating Jones files across the backends, and accordingly, accordingly it's uh, uh, updates. Mm, uh, so backends are just it's a pluggable, uh, it's a pluggable DNS drivers. So backends uh, in designate we have uh, supports for uh, various DNS uh, drivers like uh, bind, power DNS, Dynect, and there are others also. So uh, mini DNS is it's a minimal DNS server that is written in Python. Basically, what it does, it actually propagate uh, zone information to customer-facing DNS servers. Now, uh, now multi-region designate deployment. So here, uh, uh, the uh, there's a we will have. Two sites, uh, like in primary sites, we, which is uh, where uh, which is active, and we have the DR site that is on the standby mode. So, uh, so uh, because in disaster recovery, we talk about uh, when we talk about uh, workloads, uh, we actually we, uh, for backup, we take uh, two things: one data and another metadata. So. Uh, for storage replication and database, we can perform. Uh, we can. There are multiple tools through which uh, we can uh, just back up our uh, designate database. Uh, because uh, here I will only focus on designate disaster recovery. So uh, my uh, I, I am only uh, discussing about uh, in designate what we need to back up so that we can perform disaster recovery at the latest stage. So. Uh, we can take uh, database backup, uh, and uh, we can have uh, uh, DR middleware uh, like that will keep the metadata, uh, that will copy the metadata from primary site to uh, DR site and keep them in sync. 
at the DR site so that uh, later we can uh, recover uh, that. So, uh, so this is a multi-reason uh, uh, designate deployment. So uh, here uh, we have uh, the another in reason one we we have active uh, designate deployment, and in uh, reason two we have uh, uh, designate in standby mode. So uh, the uh, we uh, actually what we are replicating here we are replicating a database to our disaster recovery site. So uh, what I actually used for this, it's uh, uh, for because uh, I had uh, a small amount of uh, not uh, very uh, heavy workloads for, I, I just tested it for light workloads. So accordingly, I used uh, MySQL dump that comes with uh, MySQL server. And basically what uh, MySQL dump, it's, uh, you can, uh, through MySQL dump, you can take the backup of your database and uh, it actually generates a script through which uh, you can recreate the database at the uh, at uh, your disaster recovery site just by copying them there and and other uh, is uh, for uh, uh, backup replication of uh, the other configs like uh, pull co configurations and uh, others uh, i used uh, rsync rsync uh, it's uh, uh, very efficient uh, it's a replication tool that uh, copies uh, that copies uh, the files from one location to a distinct location and it's efficient because it is it has a, a, a algorithm like it's a it uses the delta compression algorithm that uh, after that uh, transfer uh, that performs only the incremental transfer, thus reducing the uh, bandwidth over the network. Uh, so we will have a short uh, demo in which uh, what I have done, uh, actually I, I have did it with uh, two VM, one in uh, uh, India and another one in Japan. So uh, what I did, I just uh, integrated my designate integrated the designate component with uh, NOAA, and you will see in the demo that uh, uh, when I will uh, create the instance, then uh, the records will be automatically generated. And uh, after we can, at that point of time, we can uh, take backup of my designate database, and also uh, we can uh, take the uh, backup of uh, another configurations of designate at the recovery site that, uh, that will be there in Japan. And uh, after that, I can uh, just recover from there whenever the disaster strikes at my primary location that will be in, that is in India, then uh, I can recover uh, from uh, my uh, uh, deployment, uh, OpenStack deployment uh, in Japan. So let's play the short demo. Oh, sorry. So, no, uh, video, I think, not, not appearing. Yeah, video is not working. It's is that built in in your open system? No, no. It's yeah, that was actually it. Yeah.
Yeah, two dollars twenty three per game. I guess. After that, the rich challenge is gonna be like more played. Okay, I'm going to start. So it's time to schedule. Okay. Time to make. Okay, uh, let's uh, go through the demo. So basically, this is uh, the reason one is my uh, primary uh, site uh, that is active designate uh, deployment, and uh, the stack two is my uh, that is recovery site that is there in Japan. That is my uh, that's recovery site. So basically, I created one uh, a zone uh, with name example dot com, and so. So it's created, and I will perform the necessary configuration for uh, yeah. just uh, for record automatic record creation in case the, any any instance is created. I restarted the API and sync component. So uh, after this, when I will uh, create an instance, so uh, the designate sync component will automatically uh, listen to the event notification from NOAA and, uh, and later it will uh, tr uh, trigger the creation of automatic records according, uh, according to my configuration that I put uh, in the designate component. So uh, I created uh, an instance with uh, named testvm so we will see that the records will be automatically created in uh, the configured zone. So this, uh, I, config I just configured these three records. So we have uh, two uh, IPv4 records and uh, one IPv6. So uh, now I, what I will do, I will just uh, replicate. I'm here, uh, I'm replicating all my uh, designate configuration to a remote site. And I can also uh, just uh, set async in my, as a uh, Chrome job, uh, by which I can just schedule this activity so that uh, my the uh, the uh, current my primary site and my disaster recovery site will be in sync and I also uh, when we perform uh, disaster recovery we have to replicate all our Jones files and uh, So,
So we can see I replicated uh, you know, all our ng our ngrdef configurations and our all the June files there. Now I can uh, also take uh, taking the database dump that will generate uh, a script. Uh, that I will just replicate at my, uh, take a backup at my disaster recovery site. And uh, there I can just recover all my, uh, the, all the database and its data. So MySQL dump at the time of backup, it automatically provides the logs uh, due to which uh, we can mitigate the in inconsistency that uh, may happen when uh, the data changes at the time of backup. So now we are at uh, disaster recovery, uh, we switched to disaster recovery site. So, uh, Actually, I'm uh, just changing the IP address there. Uh, so we have the same pool configurations that were in the primary site. I used bind nine as my uh, DNS server backend. So these are the script uh, that I just um, did the backup of. Uh, and now I will execute this script so that uh, uh, the database will be recreated at this recovery, recovery site as well as the, the back data will be populated in the database. I restarted all the services. Uh, I started all the services of designate at my recovery site. And now all the services started. Now we will see that uh, now I will be able to list the uh, zones at my recovery site that were that was there uh, in primary site. Oh, that's authentication problem. Okay, stone restart. Okay. Wow. So Keystone, uh, that's Keystone, now Keystone is started. Oh. Sorry. Now we will see, now, uh, now we, we recovered the data from our primary, uh, the data that we backed up from our primary site now we will see that uh, we are also able to all the record sets of that uh, Jones. So uh, in this way we can uh, 
take uh, just perform the disaster recovery. Uh, we can uh, perform uh, because uh, I just uh, did it in a manual form. We can automate this with the help of uh, some Python scripts, or we can uh, automate the uh, workloads with some heat scripts. And Uh, now we will look uh, uh, what are the challenges uh, that uh, we uh, face during a disaster recovery. So uh, basically, if we have we are uh, managing multiple DNS server with uh, designate, actually uh, there is no uh, DR plan in uh, place for DNS server. You will have to uh, uh, you will have to just uh, back up uh, all the zone files and uh, not. Uh, of all the DNS server, maybe you will have to just have, will have to redeploy, uh, or you will have to just have the same uh, deployment at your disaster recovery site. So, uh, also there is a no failure procedure uh, in uh, currently in Designate uh, the, uh, by which uh, if uh, some disaster strikes at my primary site, I can quickly switch over. Uh, automatically, it uh, gets switched over to a recovery site. And uh, uh, the next challenge is uh, the current plan uh, is uh, incorrect or unreliable. Like, uh, if uh, like I am uh, MySQL, like I was using MySQL dump to back up my database, but uh, it is uh, good if uh, I have uh, uh, small workloads. Okay, uh, like uh, around 5 GB or something. But if you, you ha if I have heavy workloads, then uh, MySQL dump will be of no use. Like uh, it, it may the it may take the high bandwidth and uh, low latency will be there. And uh, and also uh, next uh, challenges uh, that I faced. Uh, during uh, the disaster recovery uh, is the plan includes unnecessary technologies like uh, we can there are other technologies uh, like uh, uh, we can take uh, like uh, there are rbd mirroring or you know uh, there are backups other uh, backups available so uh, we can uh, just use that uh, instead of uh, some uh, instead of mysql or MySQL uh, or rsync for uh, other workloads. And uh, what happens sometimes the plan uh, has not been effectively tested. Like uh, sometimes the, what, when we plan our disaster recovery, we sometimes consider, like I consider uh, light workloads because uh, we don't uh, have heavy workloads. So it was actually not able to test uh, uh, my disaster recovery plan at uh, on that workloads. So these are the challenges uh, that I faced during my disaster recovery plan. So thanks. Any QA? So uh, any questions?
uh, here I am also replicating the keystone, but I didn't focus, uh, didn't uh, miss focus in my presentation because uh, it's a really disaster recovery is a big topic, right? Yeah, you, you need to recover keystone at the recovery site. Uh, you mean to say that I should have uh, distribute my workloads, right? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, means uh, uh, you mean to say that uh, if I'm creating zones. Okay, uh, so uh, that is, uh, that will be uh, like it will be pushed to both the regions, right? And will be in sync. If I create any new records, then that will also be available in the, my uh, another region, right? You mean to say? Uh, yeah, we can we can do that with the help of pull configurations, but uh, sometimes it's uh, hard. Uh, means yeah, means uh, you say it's propagating with the help of pull. We can uh, just push the, that those join information to our targets, but it uh, makes some makes the configuration really hard. Uh, well, just because of long distance, maybe it ta it will take time. Okay, thanks.